Good morning. On this last Sunday before Holy Week begins, we are given the promise of resurrection in the story of Lazarus coming back to life from the dead. And what better time to have the message of new life when we have been isolated in our homes, knowing that this virus is sweeping across our land, taking lives, taking our freedoms, and making us scared and anxious. In John's Gospel, after four days in a tomb, the dead man, Lazarus, is raised back to life. John doesn't present new life in a pretty way. We don't see an, an angelic, soft-skinned little baby in this story emerging. What we do see, though, is renewed life, life that comes back after it was dead. With extra time at home, if you get a chance, you might look online at some of the great artworks de depicting Lazarus coming out of his tomb. From Giotto to Rembrandt to contemporary artists, you'll see that these artworks sh often show Jesus making an upward gesture with his arm as he shouts, Lazarus, come out. And Lazarus is usually depicted emerging from a tomb with his burial cloth still wrapped around him, his face still gray from death. The dead man's body obeys the sound of Jesus' voice. His eyes look directly at him, while all around witnesses cover their noses and their mouths in these images because the stench is so noxious. With the masks being worn all around us to cover our nostrils and mouths, with PPE, protective equipment that health care workers need and that we're encouraged to wear, this story could be taking place this morning in the emergency ward of a New York or Connecticut hospital. Unbind him and let him go, commands Jesus. And Lazarus stumbles awkwardly out, trusting that voice, trusting in the sound of his dear friend's words. In German, they call it a trustwort. He may be a bleak figure, Lazarus, dripping with bandages and moving in jerky, halting steps, but he is alive. How else does someone emerge from a tomb? You can't dress up for the occasion. We've probably never seen such an emergence, except in horror movies, perhaps. But we do know something about starting over. If you've lived even a little bit, you've started over somewhere, and we know it's certainly not easy or comfortable to come into new life. For example, when you have major surgery, you're told to climb out of your hospital bed and begin walking the very next day. It seems impossible to the beaten down patient who just wants to stay in their bed. After surgery, those first steps come with such great difficulty, and slowly, slowly, strength does return. Amazing what the human body can do. I think of the substance abuser who's trying out the 12-step program, maybe not the first time, but maybe the third or fourth time. He finds the excruciating wisdom of one day at a time so difficult to live out. It is a step program, and you start with one step, the first step. The first step is we admitted that we are powerless, acknowledging that you can't control everything. You are powerless, and that acknowledgement is an awkward first step. You swallow hard, and you try to put that foot in front of the other foot. It would be so much more comfortable, though, to go back to our old routines of navigating life through the blur of alcohol or some other substance that lends itself to abuse. Too bad we can't just begin again with a wink or a wiggle of our nose, like I Dream of Jeannie or Bewitched. Remember those old shows? 
But quick fixes always led to trouble anyway on those programs. Quick fixes just don't work. I think of a recent widower like my father, or perhaps a new retiree, stepping down from a career he loved, and it means starting all over again. And at a late age, how challenging that is. Especially at the beginning, what will fill our days? The new widower or the new retiree has to get out there, as counterintuitive as it feels at first, slowly putting one foot in front of the other, like Lazarus emerging from the tomb of grief to engage with life again. So new life is just plain awkward, and it's hard. New life in the age of coronavirus means staying at home, not seeing our friends, not going to school or church or the office or our bridge game. But this awkward behavior is proven to let others live, and that's our moral imperative right now, to give more life to others. Try to imagine how faith in new life makes transformation possible. It's faith in new life that will get us through this time of the coronavirus, faith that God is with us, no matter what, no matter what is coming. We're only two weeks into our isolation time now. There are six more weeks to go, maybe more. There's more spread of the virus to come. There's more loneliness and frustration, more schooling at home, more anxiety about our jobs and the economy. But just as a virus can spread, so can our attitudes. We can spread an attitude of fearfulness and be reactive to little things, or we can spread an attitude of calm and so patience and understanding around us. A virus might have the ability to invade the body, but it can only invade the heart and the mind if we allow it. One of the norms at our diocesan meetings up in Meriden and throughout the diocese is to use both and thinking. Both and is a concept to give perspective in a challenging time. Both and is noting that the reason the parent is not at work and the child is not at school is because of a scary virus but it also means that more frequent nightly dinners around the table is making the family unit closer. Both and is how you can say to your spouse or to your parent or child, I'm so glad I get to spend this extra time with you, while at the same time recognizing that this togetherness is driving us all a little crazy. Both and is saying to my neighbor, I can't have dinner with you tonight, but that doesn't mean I don't cherish your friendship and the fact that you're a wonderful neighbor to me. Using the both and concept helps us negotiate a middle way through the landmines of relationships without going to extremes, without being reactive or taking offense. Both and is a roadmap to find new life together. The first step to coming back to new life can be the transformation that helps take that next step into believing in new life even further. One step leads to another, and change is possible. What new life will this period of coronavirus bring for us? What will God teach us in this time? What will we learn? A transformative community is when enough people believe in new life and change are possible. And that is the definition of church, people gathered together who put their hope in the story of an innocent man who was killed, and that experience leads to new life for those of us who follow his teachings. The core message of the cross is that real joy and peace can never be reached while bypassing suffering and death. Not bypassing it, but only by going right through suffering and death, one step at a time along the Via Dolorosa, the road to Calvary, believing that new life waits for us afterwards. So as people who believe in new life, 
We believe that transformation is truly possible. Every day we can go from a death-dealing experience like betrayal and still believe that love is really possible even when it looks like it has died, both and thinking. In one of his cantatas, Johannes Bach imparts a deeply mournful sound, which makes me think of the weeping Mary and Martha when their brother Lazarus died. If only you had been there, Lord, this never would have happened, Mary says. And Jesus himself weeps with the sisters of Lazarus. They were dear friends. Johannes Bach shared how he emerged from his great period of grief in his life. He said that the miracle of new life came to him. I was in despair, he said, but I found a trust for it. I was in despair, but I found a hopeful word. There in the center of his brokenheartedness, he encountered the heart of Christ wounded for our sake. He went from utter despondency to finding the resting place of God's great love and compassion. And it is there he is able to begin a new life. Where will you find the hopeful word, the trust for it? The call of Jesus to come out and leave death behind you is an invitation to you to take those first brave steps into your new life in Christ. Remove the stone and come out of the tomb. May we all, in these days and always, put our trust in the Lord. Amen.